Welcome to this edition of the Plan C Podcast. I am here, uh, and I will be joined by Cameron shortly. We had an intro for this podcast, but unfortunately, it, it sounded awful because doing this over Skype is really hard, uh, believe it or not. But now, we just hope that everyone's doing all right. Uh, we are doing all right ourselves. Uh, we're very fortunate and, you know, we are healthy and, you know, just okay. So Cameron and I are going to debut a new sort of, I guess, segment, episode format. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but it is called Quentin Quarantino and what it is is we are going to watch movies that one or both of us have not seen many many movies whatever it is we don't care um and we'll record a little bit before uh watch the movie and then record a podcast after it should be pretty great uh i had questions for cameron prepared uh so he answered those that was pretty good and yeah it was it was a fun time to be honest um you know did netflix party and then recorded the podcast over skype and it sounded a lot better uh so you know it's it's just a challenge but you know we're gonna keep pushing and we're gonna keep making content for y'all in this time of craziness and we just hope everyone's all right and that you know just you're staying positive because staying positive is just important in times like this just want to shout out to first responders and essential workers out there they're truly doing the work in the trenches right now at just kind of like wartime conditions and you know people are busting their ass so thank you to them what else what else what else uh shout out to producer crayola she is napping as we are we as i record this right now uh follow us on instagram at plan underscore c underscore podcast uh same with twitter check us out on apple podcasts on spotify you know follow uh subscribe rate review whole nine yards we are also on youtube uh we're gonna start i mean i know we've been saying start but we are we we have a capture card and we're gonna start doing you know some fun stuff uh soon so keep your eyes peeled for that and again just hope everyone is doing all right uh just stay positive out there and enjoy the podcast here we go And we are back. We have just watched Pulp Fiction. Uh, it is now 1.04 Eastern Time. Hanging out here with the cat and Cameron on Skype. Um, yeah, you know, so Cameron, some thoughts. Uh, was very interestingly cut. I really enjoyed a lot of the shots. It almost felt like episodic, which was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it had like a lot of religious tones, which I wasn't expecting, even though at the beginning it was like super technical and stuff. That was a interesting contrast. Yeah, that 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 opening is probably one of my favorite in all of movies. Like, yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty fucking fantastic. Yeah, dope. yeah, like, oh man, that when they're just and it's the long take where they're walking down this all this separate halls talking about the foot massages that that shit is just absolute fucking gold to me to be honest with you um yeah so um favorite character go i think i know who but go favorite character yeah probably samuel L. So, uh, so Jules. Jules. Was, Jules, yeah, uh, yeah. That's fair. It's either gonna be Jules or the wolf. The wolf is pretty lit. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, Winston Wolf is, is the fucking man. Yeah. No, f yeah, for me, it's, uh, 
It's definitely Marcellus Wallace or uh, or the Wolf, just like yeah, Marcellus Wallace is pretty just, fucking just lit. The, oh, just, I'm not even yeah, that's exa- good point. Yo, just the, you're right. Just some bad motherfuckers. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I don't even know exactly. Okay, so favorite shot or favorite scene as well. Favorite scene, hard to say. Hard to say. Like the opening shot, I think is was like pretty fantastic in going, terms of like the going overall, through the apartments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just in in turn, just the skit at the beginning, like before the yeah. credits, was pretty insane. Just yeah. like, as a way to open a movie, I think like it was just like, like clearly very iconic. And then you bring it right in with the with the fucking bright ass letters and yeah, the hype ass music. Yeah, I, I was like, I, I, even, I was like, oh, it was just good music. I, it, I didn't even mind that there were credits rolling. It, exactly. I was chill. Exactly. And you're just like. That I don't know. Personally, that just like kicks it up to a hundred for me. Yeah, for sure. And it's just like, all right, Tim Roth and his girl are about to rob this fucking restaurant. Like, all right, let's go. <laughs> and it's just, it's it's such an interesting way to like start your movie. Yeah. You know, you they're literally taking the beginning of the very last scene of their movie, and they're like, "Yep, this is the first thing you're seeing." Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that it, it, it you talked about the editing uh, just a second ago and just, you know, some of the cuts are just they're so awesome and they just they're seamless, too. Yeah. And obviously the transitions are very noticeable, but I think that's on purpose because I think you're right. I think it is supposed to be episodic um, part that made you say like, oh, fuck. Before that, actually, I'm yeah, yeah, favorite yeah. scene. I'm favorite scene. Yeah, you got something. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm we favorite didn't scene. That. I had to say. Like, I didn't um, even answer that either. Yeah, you need to answer yeah. that too. But um, on favorite scene, I did like the monologue. Well, like everyone knows, like the mo- the Samuel yeah, Jackson yeah, monologue. Yeah. Like, but without a doubt, seeing it like within the context of the movie for the first time, like it makes a lot more sense. And then and, it's like been repeated in like Boondocks and like everything. It's like yeah. so pervasive in culture. And I think that's. It was like super dope. Apparently, it's not even that's the the verse he cites is not correct. Really? Yeah. The 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 the, the verses and like the overall like saying is, but like word for word is it's apparently not correct. That's uh, fine. But my favorite scene or were you were you what do you you got anything else? No, it was just like the verse was interesting, like how it was yeah. used in both. In both in ways, both, both and ways. then like. You know, one is just like, I'm going to slap you in the face. And the other is like, you know, let's get into this. Let's, let's, let's cut it up. Yeah. Let's figure it out. And, um, so I think my favorite scene is probably, it's, it, it might be the cab scene. Um, just when he jumps down and they're driving through, but it, I don't know. That's not even... It's so easy to say like that initial hallway scene because it is such a good, it's so well shot and it's so well lit and I don't even know how they did it. I don't know if they had like, if that's natural lighting, it looks, it looks a lot like it. Um, and you know, the, the set design is just incredible there. I, I also just, I also love, um, Mia Wallace's and Vincent's date. Oh just yeah, that was pretty great. The entire sequence is fucking incredible. And just their interaction is just really interesting. And my so I'll answer a question I think I asked I may or may not have asked you, but my favorite thing about this movie is is the writing by far. Oh yeah. Because I it just seems like these are conversations that people would have. But they're like the characters are all in such extreme situations, mm-hmm. but their lines all, like, really embody, like, where that character would be coming from if, like, if a person was in that living well, they're that rela- lifestyle. They're, they're, you know? they're relatively relatable personalities, not necessarily characters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so I just... Holy shit. Well, I, I just... Ex- I, I saw them as, like, extreme examples of, like... Like, caricatures of normal people. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're supposed to be relatable. But yeah. they're, like, taken to the extreme so you recognize more things about, like, normal people. Yeah. It's like, that sounds about right. No, and, again, it's just... it. So when... Again, I think about the... You know, when they're walking through the apartments and I you 
just listen to the conversation they're having. Like that's that's a conversation two guys would have. Yeah, just like rumors, it, essentially, exactly. just banter. And exactly. Rumors. And same thing with like, you know, a sort of I don't want to say soft, but like a sort of uh, how would you describe Bruce Willis's partner in this? Like she's not quite soft, but like. She's very, I don't know, like, fragile, dainty. sort of. Dainty. That's how she's, that's how the writing has her out to be. And... But not I, unintelligent. Not not unintelligent. Not unintelligent. Just like, uh, I guess I will say soft. And it's so interesting because it's still somewhat of a relatable character. Because it's like, you know, what? what if my significant other was a boxer, you know told me that we might die and then just dipped for mad long and came back all bloody. Like, yeah. okay, I, I... Like, she, she's just a normal person. Exactly. You can't, like, fault her exactly. for a lot of stuff. Situational ass shit. All right, I'm going to ask you another question. So, uh, you never said, uh, ooh, pardon me, this is the 1 a.m. effect. Uh, part that made you say, oh, fuck. Part that made me say, oh, fuck. And again, spoilers, but I said that earlier, so if you are still here, you've done it to yourself. Um, I think when, like, I knew, I knew when Vincent was going to get shot, I had a feeling, like, from beginning, from, like, the so conversations... You Cause you, so I'm not sure. Cause you sent me a message and you said, like when he's leaving to go get the watch, you're like, oh fuck, they're both gonna die, like Bruce Willis and Fabiana. Yeah. Uh, so what, like, what in the tone kind of shifted for you? Like, it was when we went because of the skipping in time. I realized that, like, in a, in like in a normal movie where it was just cut straight through. If that was to happen in, like, that setting of the movie, I would have been like, oh, they're dead. Mm -hmm. Because that's just how, like, it would make sense to be set up if it was a continuous movie. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we started shifting, it was like, oh, these are all just different stories. So the point is that you don't know what's going to happen anytime because you're not shown the order of the context. Well, the order, the last thing to happen is, is Bruce Willis's, like, chronologically, Bruce Willis's timeline, story happens last. Yeah. And, like, when they get the clothes, that night, he takes her on the date. And all that shit happens. Yeah. And then... I mean, Bruce, Bruce Willis' thing happens within, like, a day. In terms of, like, the crazy shit. And then... Oh, when... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's literally the next night. Yeah. Because so. Marcellus Wallace is back. Um... Yeah, so, oh, oh, fuck scene? Oh, fuck scene. So is it when Vincent Vega gets, gets oozied? Silence yeah. Uzi, by the way. That's, you know, pretty good for just your average It might have been the needle scene. It might have been the needle scene. The needle scene is pretty fucking crazy, just overall. I think it was probably the needle scene. I'll say the needle scene. And just in terms of subverting your expectation of like oh wow like they're gonna fuck to oh my god what what the f I, I don't even know yeah you know when she's ODing and yeah but in, in terms of oh shit moment in the movie even when Vincent was shooting up heroin like the the I love the suspense they got when they're like oh are they gonna show it like they keep going like Normal shit, and then it's like very intense. Yeah. Switching back from scene, I was like, "Oh, they're just gonna show the whole thing." There's a time when I do that, but I was like, "This is gonna be kind of intense to watch." Cool. I, without a doubt. Uh, so, out of all the characters, which would you? Who would you be? Who would I be? Yeah. I have no idea. I'm not sure if I fit into one of oh, those. An easy answer here. Who, who, who would you say it would be? That's a better oh, question. Oh, personally, the wolf. The wolf? Just be a bad... <laughs> yo, like a reputable cleaner who just like... You got like people like Marcellus Wallace calling you for a favor like that. 
and calling you for a job like that, I don't know. That's some that's some high ass gang shit. Cause if this man, you saw this, you saw Marcellus Wallace's house. So like, he's obviously made. He's just he's not on like that that trap shit anymore. Yeah, like, he's a made fucking man. He's that Jay Z living. Exactly. So I don't know. If you, I, I, I'll if, accept. I'll if, accept Wolf. That's a compliment. That's it, definitely a compliment. Exactly. Like that would be that would be some hype shit to be on. For sure, that'd be dope. And like I would Jules as well. Jules would be that would be a fun not fun but like I don't know I think that would be a good character. I obviously wouldn't want to be a fucking hick, hit hip ah, <laughs> hitman gangster, but you know. I almost said hipster there. I have no idea why. <laughs> yeah, but he's like... Jules is interesting. It was, it's really interesting because... How, how religious he was was interesting, too. Well, after after the after the supposed divine intervention. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it certainly... It certainly is something to think about because, you know... Was it divine intervention? Yeah. It's... Well, that, well, the point of what I did, I did notice was the reason I thought Vincent was going to die was because they, they kind of explain it later when they're having the, it, it was a divine intervention moment. And the reason I was like, oh, they definitely made it so Vincent was, he didn't accept the miracle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so he was kind of had to die. Mm. On some like. Uh, on some, uh, Egyptian plague shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I thought that was, like... You don't believe I had a feeling. You, uh, yeah. I and also, you. he was a, just a, such a dick. He was such a... <laughs> and he was in so so many precarious situations where he just didn't really need to be in them. And be... And, and not... You know? And he could have not been a dick. Yeah. But. And then I'm just like, you know... And it was at the point of the movie where I thought like someone someone important has to die because they were just showing wild shit. And I was like, someone someone's gonna die. And then yep. like see the gun, you're like, uh <laughs> Yeah, like once uh, the Pop Tarts go in, yeah, what did you think when he like just stares? Like what through went through your mind before the gun came into frame? Did you think it was a gun? I had no idea what it was. Yeah. I I was just like Is it a person? I don't know. I'm like <laughs> Yeah. Uh, another question I have for you, um, best outfit. Best outfit? Yeah. I don't really have the outfits in my head right now. Mm. Interesting that I wasn't looking at that, though. Yeah, Gosh. I'm kind of surprised, like, artistically you weren't, like, you didn't even, like, pick up a little bit something there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I was, I've been thinking mostly about the writing, so I hadn't really thought about the outfits. Yeah, well, there's this this shit is layered, so you know. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look at that. I, I personally, the Marcellus Wallace, uh, getting getting donuts and coffee, fucking church orange shirt, like it's a it's a it's certainly a look. Not the one I'd go with. I think the number one I'd go with is um, is is when Bruce Willis has the. The the uh, he has the white shirt, the jeans, and the cool brown coat. Oh yeah, I do remember. Like that, that was that was a fit. It was pretty hard. Definitely, uh, definitely, definitely suited su him. Huh? Definitely suited. His oh character. yeah, it's like the American butch, you know, type thing. Mm -hmm. I also think a uh, special shout out to uh, Vincent Vega's bolo tie. Oh yeah. I don't know if you noticed that, like he's wearing a bolo tie there uh, on the date. That's that's pretty good. Uh, and the pajamas that uh, the the heroin dealer always seems to be wearing is like, this man is uh, ready for quarantine. You know, <laughs> facts. He's just he's selling heroin and eating cereal at one thirty a.m. You know, he's he was he was on the wave way before us. Uh, most most fucked up scene. I think there's an easy answer scene easy answer here but what was the scene where you're like Ugh. like in terms of nasty or in terms of like whatever when the kid got shot in the face by accident oh yeah that was pretty fucked up i thought you were gonna say a different answer there's just a kid got shot in the face yeah no that's true yeah that was it was like was, it was like i knew at the point like we're supposed to be numbed by the crazy shit by that point mm -hmm. kind of 
so you don't realize that he was actually just an or innocent kid. Or expect it. Yeah, that got shot in the face. He was legit just a random kid that got shot in the fucking face. Yeah, man, man really turned around and said, Marvin, what do you think? And bow! You have to have an opinion. Yeah. yeah. I think it was interesting because I felt like he, like Tarantino put it there so me to like make you realize, like, oh shit, like a random innocent kid just got shot in the face, but we've seen so much crazy shit that like, it's just like something that happened. Yeah, that's some devil man shit right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout, out, shout out devil man, crybaby. I finished it earlier today. And, uh, I wasn't happy with the ending, but I, that, that's not, that's not, that's not to take away from how good of a story that was. You know, just because I'm not happy with how it ended doesn't mean it wasn't an absolutely fantastic ride. Yeah. It's, it was probably going to be a depressing ass any, ending anyway, based off the source material, it's going to be dark as fuck. Anyway, um... What like what is what what stood out to you? Um it was definitely how Tarantino was like escalating and de deescalating like the situations in the movie mm -hmm. in terms of just like playing with our like emotions of like oh shit something's going to happen like intense shit's happening crazy shit's happening and then like oh we're in someone's living room you know it's a normal day for them yeah and all of a sudden all this crazy shit is going on and just sh showing, like, how different in, like, risk each person's, each people's lives were mm -hmm. in contrast to each other. But they all were just, like, because you saw how different they were, they all just kind of became people. Yeah. And that, that to me was, like, very, that was cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. No, and... So did you, this isn't something that's like particularly, no, I, I don't think you would notice it unless you were looking for it, but it's, it's in all Tarantino films. Uh, so he has a foot fetish and so you will see women's feet much more in Tarantino films than any other film. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. And like, if you, if you. Foot massage. <laughs> Foot massage, you know, you see her, you see Mia Wallace's feet in the beginning. They take off their shoes when they're in the dance competition. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of stuff. And, 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 you know, it's just interesting little nuggets like that that you find and you're like, oh, that's cool. Like, cute Tarantino. All right. Um, favorite thing about the movie? I know we kind of said writing, but... What it is, I'll, I'll ask you to go more in depth. Hmm. What do you think? You say first, I'll think about it. Because I, I just watched it, so. <laughs> so, I'm going to go a little more in depth on just the writing. Uh, and just, you know, it. the writing made characters that, you know, not only are likable but are also relatable and i mean i guess you know like oh characters have to be relatable to be liked blah 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 whatever but i don't know i think you can't there can be a difference between a likable and a like a relatable character and i think that that balance is fairly very just finely walked in this you know you have characters that are really funny but also like assholes like Vincent Vega and yet you have like stoic ass motherfuckers who will also rip bible verses and shoot people in the dome you know mm -hmm. uh and yeah I don't know it's just I think he I think they really wrote characters well in this movie and wrote them in a way where it's like you know what, like, I knew a crazy motherfucker like that that would do some dumb shit like that. I'm not saying personally, but, you know, it's about making them have character development throughout and making them make decisions that the characters would actually make, you know, based on the things that happened. No, yeah, I feel you. Like, the characters were, like, prop definitely, like, the best part of the movie in terms of... That's just, like, how you make a three-dimensional character, you know? It's yeah. just, like they have to be unique enough that the decisions they make, you would attribute to the character they have, like, created in this series. And, yeah, like, the, just the character progression was, like, 
very interesting and in how they tied into the how each character's personality tied into like the messaging in the stories was just like interesting like you know vincent being the very like i don't believe in anything mm. shit just happens mm. and then he dies right and then there's also the the drug dealer who is in the beginning just talking about probability and you know like oh it's just more likely that this will be like an easy rob and ends up randomly oh, by no, chance. No, 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 no. He wasn't. He not the, the drug dealer though. The, the robber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert. Tim Roth. Tim yeah. Roth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the actor's name. Yeah. Tim Roth. He was in the beginning of the story. He was like they were basically just like, oh, this is gonna be easy, you know. Easy. Based score. on probability and shit, and just happens to be Sam L's there. I that is a motherfucker. <laughs> I for a while I wanted to get that wallet, but then I but then like looking back now I'm like no I was 15 it probably would not have been a good idea if I had a wallet that said bad motherfucker on it. Yeah, like that wouldn't be good to take out. Yeah, no for sure. <laughs> uh, another question I have I keep rattling these off, but what do you think was in the briefcase? Um, because there 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 are theories or there's well I'm just I'll just tell you about one. After you guess, but yeah. At first, I was thinking it was drugs, mm -hmm. but but he said like beautiful, which was interesting, mm -hmm. which made me think like usually only something that's like art is like beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I was like, it could be like interesting that you would say that. Yeah. So the theory is, and this is jewelry, kind of floated throughout, is that. The Artifact. briefcase contains Marcellus Wallace's soul. And that, huh. like, something happened that it got taken out through the back of his neck. And if you see, before he has the briefcase, the, the fucking, the band-aid is there. But when you see him for the fight, like, when they bust into the room uh, to see their boxer, there's no more band-aid. So I, you know, there's like, like oh, like he got it got taken out through his neck and blah blah, blah some shit like that. That's hmm. what people have said. That's interesting. I think it's like people are thinking like what's the most, because when like when you think of beautiful, it could either be art or it has to be something like you think something very important. Yeah. Or something like something with, striking. Yeah, or something to do with like sentience or human creation. Mm. You know what I mean? So Something I think it's, profound. Exactly. So you, like, it would make sense that people would theorize that it was his soul. That would that that makes logical sense to me. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you have any questions for me or any other uh, any other thoughts or statements before we wrap up here? Uh, what is your most hated character? My most hated character. Uh, I. I don't dislike a lot of characters in this movie, which is strange for me because a lot of the times I'll like kind of nitpick. Um, I don't, I don't love Vincent Vega just because of his decisions and his just like, he's just really aloof. Uh, but again, that's, I, I don't know. He's, he's also just like such a kind of funny character. He's such an interesting character that I, you know, it's whatever. Um, I guess maybe, I, and this isn't, this isn't, this isn't like me denouncing this character, just like my least favorite character is probably Mia Wallace. Cause it's just like, well, I, I don't know, I guess because my morals lie so like far from her actions in, mm. in the movie. Yeah, no. I mean, definitely when she when she took the heroin out the fucking Oh, well, that's jacket. Dis that's disrespectful, but like she was going to fuck Vincent. That too. She was going <laughs> to fuck Vin like you're going to you're going to fuck your 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 husband's henchman this fucking killer and I I don't know. That was that that's some fuck shit to me. And cuz cuz also that, you know he's going to fucking die after too. Exactly. You exactly. know he's going to die. And he's like, and he's like, he's giving him the, 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 you know, you're good. You need to go back to the, to the dugout talk, you know? Yeah. He's giving him the, you know, time, time for the cows to come home type shit. 
Because he knows he's gonna fucking die. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. It's just... And again, I don't... It's not necessarily me saying I don't like this character. It's just my least favorite. Hmm. Because I don't really know who else to put in there because I... I mean, maybe... Maybe Butch... Maybe Butch, but I in this in this time around watching, I realized that like, oh wow, Butch is like really aware of his feelings, and he's really good at communicating that, and and and, and he's also like kind of relatable. So like originally, I didn't like Butch so much, but now it's like, oh, he's kind of okay, all right, and I don't know. I mean, like, obviously, like he's kind of a dick because oh, like yeah, without a doubt, he doesn't care about. Killing this, killing a dude. Well, I don't think Which, I don't. I think it's more so that like he accepts that those are the risks going into the boxing ring. I guess that's. I guess that's true. I guess that's true. But even then, like usually there is that human element that like without a doubt that's like oh you oh, just, I just murdered I, someone. I, Did yeah. you need to murder that person? Yeah. And he's kind of just like fuck it. I got the money. You know like. So there's that aspect of him, but I think, like, yeah, he, like, when he admitted that he was wrong in that, like, argument, I was like, oh, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, usually you have these characters that just do, like, asshole shit like that, and then just, like, it's cool, and it's like, no, 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 like, there actually needs to be conversation. Your girl doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, alright, you, uh, your least favorite character? During wa- watching it, definitely Vincent was my least favorite. Yeah, that's not surprising. You you hate non logic. Yeah, he was just did some. He was just being like a dick for no reason. Oh, don't treat like you fucked up. You hear I, the, you're like he fucked up. He fucked I, up bad I times. Know. We know. I know. We I I know people in the world that are just like, yeah, I I fucked up, but like I I said I fucked up, so now you can't like be mad at me for fucking up type shit. Yeah. No. Don't don't get me wrong. Like his character. He's like a good character. I just, oh, yeah. I just hated him. Yeah. He was just fucking annoying. He's just a, just an ass. All right. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, Apple Podcasts. Rate us, review us, Spotify, follow us, like our podcasts. It really helps us with like the algorithm and stuff. Uh, we're gonna try and get more and more episodes out to y'all. We now have. The capability to record solo pods just by ourselves so keep your eyes out for those uh you got anything to plug uh not really just been chilling here in quarantine drawing yeah right we we hope everyone is oh, actually i do have a shout out um we have a mutual friend uh radia she made some gifts on giphy so check out her stuff uh you just have to search knives meow all one word in uh, the kind of search bar for Giphy, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, so check out her gifts. They're cartoonish and funny and... And check out her on Instagram. Yeah, and check out, check out her Instagram. Um, yeah, I... Check out my Instagram, check out Cameron's Instagram. His is at Stoke Lotus. Mine is just my name, at Colin Hamilton. My, I, I, I should do more promotion uh, on the Instagram for just this stuff yeah i mean stickers designs are done yeah designs are done we're gonna we're gonna those are gonna be on our instagram probably before we post this which reminds me you gotta send those to me please thank you uh yeah so we hope everyone is staying safe and hope your family is okay and everyone's safe and you know you're finding stability all this chaos, right? Balance. Um, yeah. Any any other wise words before we depart? Uh, quarantine shit. Uh, it's been probably been like how long? How many weeks has it been since I've been on a pod? It's been a minute. It has been a little while. We've just we've been quarantined and didn't yeah. figure out this Skype ish, and well now we have. So yeah, but keep definitely. your ears open, folks. Things to say, quarantine, it's hard. People, stay on your shit. I'm gonna try to stay on my shit. And also, like, take solidarity in the fact that you are not the only person going through this crazy fucking time. Yeah, there's like, there's like a lot of time where people are like, 
catastrophizing a lot. Yeah. And it's like obviously if you're on the news, you're gonna see a lot of negative shit all oh, the time. Oh, do not watch the news. Do not like like obviously like you wanna know about what's going on, but like don't torture yourself. Don't like if you're watching more than an hour of news, you're even even thirty minutes, you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah, it's, it's it's bad. Like if you if you if you aren't directly like impacted by this situation in terms of like maybe you have to know someone that's sick or you lost a family member or something like that. Yeah. I would say like try to focus on like the good shit. For real. Like a lot of people are getting kinda of, like paralyzed by this like situation. Like a lot of people other people use that as excuses not to do work and shit like that, etc. You know. Yeah. Every, everyone knows like the lethargy that comes in with being boxed in. Oh so I I got it. I actually do have another shout out. Um shout out to my boy Bernie Sanders. He dropped out today. Uh, I mean, like he, I, I <laughs> this is all you gotta do, sigh. I, I could see the signs on the, I, I can see the writing on the wall, and it's disappointing. But it's just like, ah, oh, like, all right, it's actually gonna happen. Like, great, <laughs> great, I'm so yeah. happy. And like the Biden versus Trump race. And this, and this man, and this man Trump <laughs> oh, man. was like inviting Bernie Bros to vote for him. It's it's crazy. All right, that's, that's we should not end on a bad note though. No, we're not gonna end on a bad. I note. I think on a good note, I think that this is a great time. We're all inside, so this is a great time. If you have any hobbies, you know, check out Pulp Fiction, check out movies that you guys haven't seen For before. Real. Check out anime. You like seen anime, before. we got Colin watching an anime. It's great. Exactly. You know, times are changing. Yeah, we might do we might do a Devilman Crybaby podcast episode, but we'll see about that. Yeah, this is a great time to invest in ourselves as people. Bet on also yourselves. on talents, you know, if you want to try something, it's a great time to try it, do your best, connect with people, everyone's looking for connection, so yeah, the best of it, communicate y'all, alright, that has been it from the Plan C Podcast, Plan C Podcast, Plan C MF Podcast, that is for, uh, I don't know, motherfucker. <laughs> um, we watched, you know, Sam Jackson, so he says motherfucker a lot. Uh, if you have Animal Crossing, hit me up. I would love to visit your island and have you visit mine, and I've just put a lot of hours into Animal Crossing and... Great quarantine game. Great quarantine game. Great freaking quarantine game. Um, yeah. Final Fantasy VII Remake is coming out very, very, very soon, so that's gonna be cool too. I don't know if I'll buy it right, like right away. But, I'll yeah. probably, I'll probably end up getting it too. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably get it for the Switch though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, that is it for me. I am Colin at Colin Hammickson. Check me out on in that sounds. I, I don't like that. Check me out on Instagram. No, check us out on Instagram at Plan underscore C underscore podcast on twitter and instagram check out our patreon check us out on spotify apple all of those things you know the spiel yeah yeah all, all good. right enjoy your day night morning whatever you're whenever you're listening we really appreciate the listening listen in and uh you know keep an ear out for more quentin quarantino i don't know if we're just gonna limit it to quentin tarantino movies or we're just gonna name this series quentin quarantino because it reminds us of when we started and how fun this all is just kidding but you know what if you're having fun that's okay that's all right. All right, I'm going to stop babbling. That is it from us. Thank you so much for listening. Have fun. Have fun. Stay sane. Stay safe. Wash your hands. And have a good time. See you guys. Deuces.